Knipsy here, and this is the Sony Xperia XZS, Sony's latest flagship Xperia smartphone. But should you buy this phone or should you buy the Xperia XZ from about 6 months ago or wait for the upcoming XZ Premium? Well in this video I'm going to answer all those questions as it is my full review of the Xperia XZS. Sony made a gorgeous modern phone, it's almost undeniable, but it does look identical to the XZ from last year so if you want a brand new look, you can forget it. But this phone does look really good, it looks like a carefully crafted modern design piece. The new matte black creates a super stealthy look, but the amount of fingerprints and oil this phone picks up and shows is super intense. On my unit, there's a dual SIM card tray with a micro SD card option, and the phone follows the Sony trend of IP68 water and dust resistance. Also here, surprisingly, are dual front facing speakers, and that is something super hard to find on phones today. They are great because they face you, but they aren't as loud as speakers on other smartphones, so it's kind of a bit of a trade-off. But as a result of the speaker placement, you're getting some really thick bezels on the top and bottom that really contribute to the size of this phone. And the side bezels are also quite thick too. The curved glass makes them look really not so noticeable, but still, thinner bezels all around will be great. There are some other negatives with this design too, mainly button related. So the volume rocker first is in a horrible place, it's just not a natural place for your thumb to move. And also the power button, at least in the US, is not a fingerprint scanner, while internationally it is. If you're in the US, the only method to unlock this phone is via a password through software. I absolutely loved the fingerprint scanner placement on my Canadian X performance unit. It was fast, it was in a great overall place, and it was side mounted so it was very cool, but it's really sad to experience what it's like to not have a fingerprint scanner on a flagship phone in the US in 2017. On the positive side, the two-stage camera shutter button that's still very rare to have on a phone is great to have on this phone, and besides all the previously mentioned problems, the design still looks really, really good. You could say the design is getting kind of stale at this point, but I wouldn't totally agree. What Sony did here is made a phone that might not look totally fresh this year, but still looks gorgeous. If you want a more brand new look, wait for the Xperia XZ Premium. The display as well also does look really nice. It's 5.2 inches at 1080p, colors look beautifully vibrant, there's good overall sharpness, and it's pleasant to look at for video watching and other content consumption. Contrast is good, but doesn't stand up to the black levels on an AMOLED display. But there is one really interesting negative here, at least on my unit. While I don't really miss Quad HD on this phone, there's some really thin diagonal lines going across the display. These lines are only visible from up close, I've never really seen these in any other phone before till now, and it's hard to show on video but you can definitely see them from fairly close. But the display itself though is good and is impressive for content consumption, you're not going to be disappointed with this phone's display. The most major change from the Xperia XZ is the specification sheet bump. You now have the Snapdragon 820 and, wait a second, the XZ had the Snapdragon 820 and the XZS has it too? Okay, so wait a second, this phone has the same specifications as the Xperia XZ, except for a gigabyte more RAM. This really surprised me for two reasons. First, on a newer flagship phone of 2017, it's using a now somewhat dated processor. For example, remember when people got pissed off when the G60 used a Snapdragon 821 instead of the much newer Snapdragon 835? Well, it's kind of the same case here, except it's an even older processor. But the other kind of surprised me was that it actually still is an incredibly fast phone for daily use. Now, I wasn't really that surprised, it's still a pretty new processor, but here you won't really find any major lag, and for most tasks, it's going to be pretty fast overall. Intense gaming won't be the absolute fastest or smoothest here, and it's not as future proof as something with the 835, and who knows how fast it's going to be in a year or two from now. Only time will tell all of those things, but for now, it's not a slow phone at all it's definitely a fast, speedy device. If you need the absolute latest and greatest processor and it has to be a Sony phone, the XZ Premium is really your only choice. The XZ Premium also has a larger battery, while here you have a 2900mAh battery, which is the same as the XZ. It's good for a full day of usage, but not really too much more. You can use included stamina battery saving modes to increase usage time to about a day and a half, or two days if you're lucky, but you do lose phone functionality through the various levels of this mode. But you do have Quick Charge 3 present here through USB-C. And now for software, it's the usual Sony software on this phone, both positive and negative. It's Android 7.1.1 and Sony has been pretty decent with updates, so expect more in the future. Sony's software additions can be pretty mixed. I like the near stock Android feel. I don't like all the extra bundled apps like AVG protection or emergency alerts with this really blurry outdated looking icon and there's a lot more. 
However, I do like the customization features on this phone and there are plenty of those features available. And Sony's applications are actually incredibly well designed and beautiful. Basically, there's a balance of both good and bad for Sony's software, and Sony has fixed many of the past issues making it for a much cleaner and better experience. But by far, my favorite thing about this phone, and no joke, one of the best things about this phone, is the rear camera. But first, the selfie camera. It's 13 megapixels and selfie shots turn out really good, but turn off that soft skin effect, it's just really creepy. The main 19 megapixel camera is awesome, and I'll be honest, it's the first time I've really enjoyed a camera on a Sony phone. The sharpness, contrast, and color are all impressive, with a fairly good dynamic range, but sometimes it can get very confused and make the whole picture dark while trying to compensate for the brighter sky. But the ability to zoom in afterwards into that high resolution image is really awesome. The camera can hold its ground quite well in lower lights or indoors, but you have to hold still, and overall photos are quite good on this phone. The 4K video is oddly hidden away in a whole separate menu while regular video caps at 1080p. But 4K video is actually quite good. I do like the sharpness and the colors and I'm also a huge fan of the really awesome steady shot stabilization. Some of the best stabilization I've personally seen on a phone today. But really oddly enough there's no tap to focus in 4K video mode while 1080p mode there is which is just really weird. And that new 960 frames per second slow motion mode is just baffling how cool it is. You record using the special mode and when the motion comes in that you want to slow down, you tap the button. While the quality really isn't the greatest ever, it is 720p, this is one of the first phones that can even do this feature and execute it very well. I'm definitely very impressed. So in summary, the Xperia XZ is definitely Sony's best work yet. The camera is great, the design is beautiful, and while the processor really isn't the absolute latest, the performance is still pretty decent overall. But I don't think you should really buy this phone right now for two major reasons. So number one, the Sony Xperia XZ is still available on the market and it's actually cheaper than the XZS and only really missing one gigabyte of RAM and a slightly better camera experience, but besides that it's pretty much the exact same overall phone, except for cheaper. And number two, the Xperia XZ Premium is coming to the market very soon. It does cost more, but it feels more like a flagship substantial upgrade for 2017. It has a much better display, the same camera as the XES, the latest and greatest Snapdragon 835 processor, a better battery, and a whole bunch of other changes as well. It may even bring the price down of the Xperia XZS and Xperia XZ, making them better value in the long run, so it may be worth waiting as well. But if you don't care if it's a Sony phone or not, there are so many other great phones on the market in this price range or cheaper that deliver some really excellent value. Now if you're already totally sold on the Xperia XCS, you're going to definitely enjoy this phone. It's Sony's best work yet by far and my personal favorite Xperia phone to date. That's pretty much it for this video. Like it if you liked it. Comment down below your thoughts on the Xperia XCS. Subscribe, hit that taco bell, and thank you for watching.